Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be looking into a very important and interesting concept which is called as structure of the web. The structure of the web is a part of link analysis. It is extremely important to analyze the structure of the web. So before moving to the actual diagrammatical explanation of structure of the web, let's have an overview of it. So basically structure of web is used to rank the web pages. We already have seen the page rank algorithm. If you haven't seen that, then do watch it from my basic analytics playlist. Next, the structure of the web is also used in recommendation systems. It is also used for detecting the link frauds. Nowadays, there are a lot of fraudulents that are occurring inside the web. So to detect the link fraud, we can use the structure of the web. The structure of the web is also useful in understanding the information flow. Basically, how the information goes from one web page to another web page, every single thing, the linkage behind it will be explained by the structure of the web. Next, it is also used for community detection. For community detection, we have seen some of the algorithms, for example, Girvan Newman algorithm. Then we also have seen the concept of betweenness centrality. Please have a look at it. If you want to know more about this concept, you can watch it from the Big Data Analytics playlist, which is already present on my channel. The structure of the web can be used for content optimization purpose also. The structure of the web is also useful in identifying the hubs and authorities. We have seen the concept of hubs and authorities. Also, we have seen different numericals related to it. I hope you have seen that video. By understanding and analyzing the insights of the structure of the web, it can also be used to enhance the user experience. So, overall, I hope that the structure of the web overview is clear to you all. Now that we have seen the overview of the structure of the web, now it's time to move on to the diagram of the structure of the web. The structure of the web consists of different components. Let's have a look at it. So you can see the most important component of the structure of the web is this strongly connected component, which is called as SCC. The next component in the structure of the web is in component and out component. Now, for this particular in component and out component, there are tendrils associated. So basically, when it comes to in component, the tendrils moves out. That is why it is called as tendrils out. And when it comes to the out component, the tendrils moves in the out component. That is why it is called as tendrils in. Apart from this tendrils, there is a tube-like structure associated which comes from in component and moves to out component. Just be careful at the arrow notations. You can see it moves from in component to the out component. The next component inside the structure of the web we have is disconnected components. You can see they are isolated from the entire structure of the web. And what exactly is the significance of all these components? We are going to look at it one by one. So now, Let's move on to each and every component and let's have a look at the significance of each, starting with strongly connected component, which is termed as SCC. So basically this SCC is nothing but group of web nodes. These web nodes are nothing but web pages. Basically it has a lot of web pages associated inside it. Now each web page connects to every single other web page. That means it has a strong interconnection between them. That is why it is called as strongly connected component. Now, since the interconnection is strong between them, that is why they form tight community clusters. The clusters that are associated with this particular set of web pages are so strong that each and every web page connects to every other. It characterizes the web connectivity patterns. That means here, the SCC can characterize the different patterns that are associated with that particular set of web pages which are present inside the SCC component. Next, it is useful in network analysis. So this is what strongly connected component is. Now, here is an example of strongly connected component. You can see this particular set of nodes. There are four nodes over here, node A, B, C and D. 
and if you carefully observe these particular set of nodes are strongly interconnected with each other that means node a is connected to node b c and d as well as the other nodes are also connected to each other now let me give you a real life example of scc let's consider a website of online store for example amazon now in this online store website you can address all these pages for example products page categories checkout page and you can see that all these pages are tightly connected with each other and these pages are tightly connected with each other because they are a part of a single online store the products page can point to the checkout page also the checkout page can also point to the products page Similarly, they can point to some other pages and that particular set of pages can also point to these pages. So you can see how they are tightly interconnected with each other. So it forms a strongly connected component that is nothing but SCC. Similarly, we can have many other examples of different websites, for example, LinkedIn. I want you all to pause the video and drop down at least one simple example of strongly connected component. I hope that with this set of examples, the concept of strongly connected component is very much clear to you all. If you guys have any single silly doubt, then you can straight away put it in the comment section. Now that we have seen the SCC component, let's move on to the next component which is called as in component. Let's focus on this in component. So first let's have an overview of what exactly is this component. So here you can see it consists of web pages that could reach the SCC that is the strongly connected component by following the set of links that are present inside it. So basically think of different web pages that are present inside this in component. All these web pages are interconnected with each other but these web pages can reach the strongly connected component. Now every single web page in this in component cannot directly connect the strongly connected component but it can connect the strongly connected component by following the different links. But you need to note one thing over here is that the strongly connected component cannot reach the in component web pages. It's one way. The in component can reach the SCC but SCC cannot reach the in component. You just have to remember this. So I hope the concept of in component is clear to you all. Now let's have a look at a simple example through which the concept will be more clear. Let's say the in component is the portfolio website that you have. It can be any portfolio website. It can be your resume. Next, the SCC we have considered is the GitHub repository. Now inside your portfolio website, you can have different GitHub repository links, which will be the link to the code for your project that you have created and you have showcased on your website. So basically the in component that is your portfolio website can reach your GitHub repository by following the link that is present in your portfolio website and it can reach the SCC that is the GitHub repository. But your particular GitHub repository cannot directly reach to the portfolio website in return. So you can see the in component reaches the SCC but SCC cannot reach the in component. I hope the concept is clear. So with this we are done with the in component. Now let's move on to another component in the structure of the web that is the out component. So let's focus on this out component. The definition of out component says that it consists of web pages that are reachable from the SCC that is the strongly connected component. That means the SCC can directly point to the out component web pages but in return the out component web pages cannot point or could not reach the strongly connected component. So basically it is the exact reverse of the in component concept. I hope it is clear. Now let's have a look at the example. Here let's say that the strongly connected component is the GitHub repository the same that we have defined earlier and here now the out component is the official documentation. Basically GitHub repository is termed as SCC because it contains different set of commits, it contains code which are directly interconnected with each other. Now your GitHub repository can directly point to the official documentation of the technology that you have used in your code. But in return the official documentation do not point to your GitHub repository in which you have defined the link. So I hope this is clear. Here. 
the SCC being the GitHub repository directly points to the official documentation which is the out component. But your out component that is the official documentation cannot in return point to the GitHub repository that is the SCC. I hope this particular example will clear all your doubts regarding the out component which is exactly reverse of the in component. So with this we are done with the out component. Now that we are done with the out component let's move on to the structure of the web again and let's check which are the remaining components. Now let's move on to the tendrils that are coming out of the in component. So basically as I said the web pages inside the in component can directly reach the SCC. Similarly the in component has the tendrils that moves out of the in component. So what are these tendrils? Let's have a look at it. So basically these are reachable from the in component but they are not able to reach the in component. So you can think of tendrils as links which moves out of a particular web page and they may not point to the SCC but yes they can point to some other websites. And in return, those websites cannot point to this in component. For example, your portfolio website can point to your project page. Now your project page is nothing but the web page on which you have set the project live. Now here, it is not necessary that your project page can in return point to the portfolio website. And also note one thing that your project page is not SCC. So I hope the tendrils out example is clear to you all. Now let's move on to the tendrils in which is a part of the out component. So you can clearly see that it comes from outside and it comes into the out component. Basically this can reach the out component but they are not reachable from the out component. It's the exact reverse of the tendrils out. So the example is that some official documentation page cannot point to any third party websites. Here the official documentation page is the out component and here the out component cannot point to any third party websites but the third party websites can point to this official documentation page which is the out component. The same way the tendrils in works. I hope this simple example will clear all your doubts regarding the tendrils in. So it is exactly opposite of the tendrils out. I hope it is clear. Now that we have seen the tendrils in component now let's move on to the structure of the web and let's see what are we remaining with. You can see the next component here is the tubes. The tubes are coming from the in component and it directly moves to the out component without even reaching the SCC. So basically these are web pages that are reachable from the in component and are able to reach the out component. So these set of web pages cannot access SCC. They do not reach the strongly connected component and also they are not reachable from the strongly connected components. So these are certain web pages that works differently from the other set of web pages. So I hope the concept of tubes is clear to you all. It's just that the set of web pages moves from in component to out component without reaching the strongly connected component. That's it. I hope this is clear. Now let's go back to the structure of the web and let's see what is the next component that we are left with. So here the next component is the disconnected components. So let's see what exactly these are. They cannot reach the strongly connected component as well as they cannot reach the in component and the out component and in return the strongly connected component in component as well as the out component cannot reach these disconnected components. So in short, they are isolated components. For example, a static isolated website. Let's say you have a website which is static, which doesn't have any link to any other website. Also, any of the website does not have link to your static website. So it is completely isolated. It cannot be reached from any other websites. Also, it cannot reach to other websites. So I hope the concept of disconnected component is clear to you all. With this we are done with all the different components present inside the structure of the web. I hope each and every component its significance and the different examples that I have given to you all for all these components is clear to you all. 
if you guys have any single doubt then you can straight away put it in the comment section also please post your reviews and suggestions regarding this particular video i would request you all to please share this video with your friends as much as possible so that they can also get benefit out of this also post your suggestions regarding what you want as the next video if you like this video please do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram please join me on telegram and thanks for watching this particular video have a good day ahead